Howard. I loved working with Howard. John and Dave were awesome, but the addition of Howard added some obsessive compulsiveness that we needed. He also, John and Dave, sometimes you have to practically beg them to speak to you. Like you have to or do like, mixes. Please. Howard does a quick mix at the end of every take. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Other instruments, and you can hear like within an hour or two exactly what the song's going to sound like, and you can mix it really quick. But when you're not behind the booth, like you pay these people. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> Their process is so different professional way or whatever, but I'm just like, want to like, be like, get out of the way and let me mix it so I can hear what the song is. It is, uh, what I'm talking about, even though I look disgusting, uh, what I'm trying to explain is that it's really tough when you have an idea of what you want in your head, and it takes months to get there, and I really, really felt that. I was feeling extremely in need of... I just wanted to, I wanted to suffocate her when she wasn't looking. She was driving me insane at this point of the record, because I felt really relaxed. I, I feel like sometimes Tegan in the studio gets like really stressed out and almost becomes... It's because I want to be in charge. I don't like leaving it up to other people. I don't, I'd like to be in charge of what happens. We don't play this on the live anymore. Just, you know, let it out, say what you need to say, you know. That arm band is ugly. <laughs> I actually used to get nervous in that, this is, it's quite a big studio. That was a little tiny room. You think you attacked? Not attacked, I just, it was creepy, it was kind of dark in there. Ghosts? Not, a, not even a ghost, just an uneasiness when I was Someone's going to sneak up behind you. No, just an Let's uneasiness. Let's hear what you're saying. What? I don't know, I feel like you're at camp. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Dean, you're not at camp. Dean, you're at Mushroom in Vancouver. You're mere blocks from your house. I know, I keep looking outside and I'm like, I live here, I'm comfortable, and then I'm here and I'm like, it smells like a fish tank, I'm not comfortable, I'm unhappy. Look at me, I'm like, I'll just, if I just punch her quickly in the face, it's going only hurt for Why a second. Why do you watch DVDs in the middle of what? Well, I don't know if I'm bored. Like, for instance, if this wasn't happening right now, I'd want to watch a TV or play video games. You're just dissociative. That's well, that's yeah. why. No, I really stressed out. I was so comfortable. I was really, I really liked that time of making the record. I was excited. <laughs> Jam. That was me and Chris jamming. What's with your bangs? Let's get toasty in here. Can you guys try to breathe a little less? It doesn't matter what anyone says, I'm the boss. This is, ha happens all the time, not just in the studio, but on the road. Arguing with Rob about what time we have to get up in the morning. None of us like to get up early, but we all pretend like we don't mind so that Rob says it for us. <laughs> he hated it. Yeah, he hates it more than anything. If he right up till the last day, Howard, he's going to be like, can we come in at noon tomorrow? You know you know <laughs> it's because Rob's late. Me and him, we argued during um, post, like when I was doing um, when I was doing all my tracking. He was arguing with me that Vancouver was lame because it, it wasn't a late city. And I was saying that like, I go out for dinner at 6, drinks at 8, home and in bed by like 11.30 or 12. And he was saying that that was lame. So it was hard to get him into the studio early. Like, do things, like go to the bank and like think and like... Bathe and wash, change the sheets and like. Come in. Uh, out here. In the take your, all the feelings right now. Take them up. Take them and roll them up. Yeah. Okay. And shove them <laughs> up your ass. Okay. Nice. That's good. Look me in the eye and tell me you don't Quite the close up. <laughs> this is a whole series of them. It's not just me. We all look bad from that angle. <laughs> I, I find mine kind of cute. <laughs> Getting John Collins and David Carswell on camera is like, they hate it, they get so uncomfortable. I called David Carswell to see if he would if he would um, interview me and Tegan for this DVD and he didn't return my call, so <laughs> apparently they don't like to be, I could have just had the wrong number, but my assumption is that he, they just really do hate being on camera. Look at those hands, so pretty. He could be a hand model, I bet you. Too. Rob went through the space where he wore a headband. Very cool. It's like the Royal Ten of Moms. This year he did the new movie. He wore the red the cap. The red cap, yeah. Then it got, he lost, I think, in New York. Okay, so we moved to Divine. We were there for quite a while, and it was extremely... This was the part where I started to really feel... Look at my hair. It's all flattened out. It's calm. But you were you were really upset during this day when you were doing this song because they, they, they wanted you to change the melody slightly, and you were really yeah, having they wanted trouble me with to it. Yeah, they wanted me to descend on the second and fourth line. 
Um, it was hard to remember because you, I, by this point, I've probably been playing the song for five months. And to all of a sudden just get into the studio. Five months we've been working on it. And then all of a sudden, they're like, could you descend on the melody line on line two and four? And you're like, that's in my head. Like, couldn't you have thought of this a year later? I mean, a year before? Anyway. But I figured it out. I think it worked good too. I was in the booth though and I could sense Tegan's. The booth is really hard. It's out. like everyone's sitting there all together and they're on this little microphone and then you're like far away and they're just like, um, good take. Um, let's do it again. And you're like, feedback. There we are in the booth. So now we're, we've got a spot where we're <laughs> feeling the heat here with the two lenses. Would you know the parts of the bridge? Yeah, I'm just my. Okay, we'll get out there and let's see. No, I want you to do it. I want your voice to do it. <clears throat> Sarah and I don't really sing on each other's songs very much. We just usually do the backups, the melodies and the harmonies live. Generally, when we're recording the records, we um, will actually record our own harmonies. And it's like it horrifies people when they find that out. I think it kills some of the, the mystery or the... I don't know. I think it's good though because it gives a whole different element to our live show because it's like the first time you've sung on half of my song so it gives it a whole different vibe and I think it fills it out differently and I think the fact is is that we could probably spend a year in a studio if we were going to do it the traditional way but because we don't have that kind of time or money or energy we just do our own backgrounds because it's easier. I know the song better, I can sing the backgrounds easier. But I have to admit, the songs where you sang backgrounds on my songs, I like it. It adds a whole, like, dimension to the songs. And you came up with that background part, and it was really... Yeah, I liked it. Thanks. Check, check, check. <laughs> Dave. This is me, I'm doing piano. How about now? And I just, it was like so easy. Eight years of classical piano I took and I couldn't figure out a simple part. It was so annoying. And Dave just kept being like, just go ahead, just keep doing it. And I just desperately wanted him to come in and play, but it all got figured out. I'm doing a lot of piano now. Oh, fat hands. Again! I haven't played piano, by the way, in like five years. 